now to wow them with my amazing oratory skills. If anyone knows how to win the hearts and minds of children, it's me. Class of morons and future victims. Slaves, underlings, and minions. Death! Painful fire and death! I'm dependable, hardworking, and a team player. How would you handle a robbery? Pardon? Oh, that wascoey wabbit! Ah, ah, he's here! He's here! Who? Mr. Judge and the Critic! The best art critic in the whole wide world! You know what this means? Oh, what does it mean? This is your big chance to get discovered as a famous artist, Doc! Easy! I will break you down to your core, like a snowball! Then, I will build you back stronger! Like a snowman! And here's one just for you, Tweety! Ooh, I love decorating cupcakes! <laughs> An accurate resemblance, wouldn't you say? Well, old gum chum, we've had some good times, but our relationship has run its course. You've lost your flavor, and I've lost interest. So, not once it came! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Musho, also known as Jason Garth on YouTube. Today, an amazing and wonderfully talented guest. What's your name, sir? Eric Bowser. Welcome, Mr. Bowser. I have a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. Please, ask away. Okay. So, uh, what are you doing during these times of quarantine? Well, just uh, keeping safe. You know, uh, following the protocols since day one, uh, washing your hands and wearing a mask and social distancing, uh, avoiding, like, unnecessary travel and uh, all that stuff. Uh, I mean, this is the first time I've been in, in a pandemic uh, this of this magnitude, uh, and I think that goes the same for a lot of us, um, like, in our lifetime, right? This is pretty serious. Uh we haven't seen anything um, uh, this bad in, in a while and uh, uncontrollable, you know? Uh, that's the other thing. It's like, it's one thing to be in a pandemic. Uh, we, we've seen illnesses come and go, uh, viruses, I should say, um, come and go, but they've been, they either went away on their own or we, we had help from uh, our, our doctors and scientists, but this one's pretty tough. Uh, and even even how to diagnose it at the b very beginning, if you can even remember March, it seems so long ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it was airborne, whether you know uh, contact or uh, you know uh, how, how it survives, still even questions that that you know they they have some idea, but I still feel like it's so unknown. How about you? Yeah, I just been like you know like. Since this whole quarantine started, been podcasting and doing like virtual, like I graduated virtually from high school. So. That's crazy. You guys are like the first ever, I think, in in a in a very long time to do it over an internet connection. So uh, I really do hope there is a a time in the near future for your uh, graduating class to, uh, you know, have a a do over for your yeah. graduation. Um, you know, there's nothing quite like being at the the ceremony and working so hard to get there. Uh, so I I really do hope that you guys have a, another chance at uh, you know getting the diploma and getting to throw your hats in the air and uh, all the traditional graduation stuff. So well, congratulations though. At least you you know you're you're done and uh, now off to college. Yeah, also in COVID. I know, right? Even there are people that are doing their first year of college over uh, Zoom. No, no uh, parties or no uh, any of those wild, crazy uh, college traditions. You know, it's it's different. Um, but uh, like I said, you know, like there was a on Instagram. This is like we're we're entering like month three without a haircut, you know? So, uh, I was on Instagram and I was like shuffling through, uh, you know, your, your Instagram feed. And I saw this like, uh, from fade factory in Burbank, California, which is like, you know, they do the tight fades and like they, they do the, the, the modern haircuts and they, they posted this picture that was in black and white. 
And it was people wearing masks, getting their haircuts outside, like wow. in, in a, outside a barbershop because of the pandemic. Wow. But I later realized that photo wasn't from this year. It was from, it had to, you know, 1915 or like it was a long time ago. Uh, so I feel like we've uh, been faced with something uh, of this magnitude before, uh, and, and I'm sure we will survive and we will beat it and we will get over it. Because, you know, you look back and, I I mean, think about how much technology they didn't have back then. Yeah. Uh, all they had was the mask, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and not a lot of uh, capabilities uh, that we have today, so... I feel like, um, you know, we're living in the worst episode of The Walking Dead, trying to find the, the reason or the cure for this. And eventually, uh, I think things will hopefully get back to normal. But uh, until then, I've been, uh, you know, enjoying podcasting uh, also and with you on this call. So <laughs> thanks for adding me to, the, uh, to your uh, collection of interviews. No problem. I don't know if you've uh, seen the other ones. Like I've had Mr. Rob Paulson on. I don't know if you know Rob, Mr. Paulson. Big I've fan. I've had, I've had a variety of people. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, what made you want to become a voice actor? And who's your biggest inspiration for voice actor? Um, I think uh, what really, uh, you know, fascinated me with voiceover is it's you know it's it's you're having fun to you're getting paid to have fun and there's you can't beat that you can't put a price on that and uh you know there are jobs i'd be like i, I would do this for free and then my agent would be like don't ever say that uh you know <laughs> you, you, you got to get paid for your your, your work and uh, uh thank god that there's there's j jobs like this it really is a, a miracle and i i almost feel like you could ask any voice actor and they're like we hit the jackpot when it came to our uh creative outlets because you know uh there are uh amazing actors and actresses that get to be on tv even or even for movies and that's a lot of hard work you know like a lot of people think it's eh, it's just acting and playing pretend and going in front of the camera but being on camera and being able to, you know, convince people that you're a character or, or this person is, is hard. But, uh, you know, voices, it's just the same, but without the camera. So uh, in a sense, we don't have to worry about how we look, uh, per se. It's, it's how we sound. And if, if our acting is, you know... You have to sound believable. You have to sound... Uh, that is the challenge, right? You don't have the camera to convey certain emotions and, uh, you know, remain in character and all that stuff. But you do have your voice and you have the audience's uh, willingness uh, to believe that uh, you're voicing a, a cartoon... A, a, a cartoon rabbit, Doc. Or a duck, for that matter. Woohoo! Or a, a ninja rat. From Ninja Turtles, so it's it's kind of a, a cool uh, job in a way where you can bounce from like three characters like that, like Bugs, Daffy, and Splinter, in an instant. But if I were to actually play these characters physically, I would I would have to get the rabbit costume on, spend yeah. eight hours in the makeup chair, do all my Bugs Bunny scenes, get out, put the duck bill on, do all my Daffy Duck scenes. And then dress up like a giant rat. You know, who doesn't want to do that? Uh, I would love to do that. But uh, but in voiceover, you just hop in the booth. You dial from character to character within seconds. And then you get to drive home. You know, you don't have to spend 12 hours on a movie set. And, uh, you know, I'm not that starved for attention. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think the voice acting is such a good mixture of... Um, Famous while not being famous, you know. Uh, we could talk about all the shows that I've done voices on, and they're world known. You know, Looney Tunes is like global. Ninja Turtles, uh, everyone knows Ninja Turtles. I love the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> but I could still go to uh, the grocery store and buy eggs and milk and uh, not be bothered by anyone. It's kind of amazing. 
uh, I almost forgot your other question, which is influence. Right. Sorry. Uh, Mel, no, no, no. Mel Blanc, uh, obviously, uh, original voice of Looney Tunes and a, a slew of other characters. Uh, but modern day, I'd have to say, uh, between Jeff Bergman and Billy West, you know, these, these guys um, kept Bugs Bunny alive and well. Uh, Mel Blanc passed away. Uh, and a, and a handful of other people um, kept these characters alive and well uh, long enough for me to be part of uh, the family. So um, it's funny, you know. Everyone wants to voice Bugs Bunny, or they they think they do, or they try to do it. Uh, and uh, you know, Doc, it's really uh, hard. It's a hard voice, Doc. Even now, I'm listening to it. I might want to go back and watch some of the originals, Doc, so I can get some of that tonality in there. And then, uh, you know, there's something about that voice that just makes you want to eat carrots. Uh, Bugs is definitely by far my favorite voiceover. Um, it's my favorite character in animation, period. Uh, so to know that I'm getting to contribute a little to his legacy is amazing. Um, and uh, trying not to... Uh, screwed up in the process <laughs> okay and if you don't mind can you do a couple more voices if I ask you to like, certain characters Sorry. yeah I mean like yeah. Daffy Duck uh, oh you want to do Marvin you want, you're you going right for Marvin huh Sorry. Uh, oh don't worry Earth Creature uh, I do enjoy your podcast but I shall have to blow it up it blocks my view of Venus uh, you know, he's he's such a crazy character, such a very bizarre way of talking, very drawn out, very hypnotic, right, canine? Uh, but, uh, you know, one of his biggest rivals would have to be me, Daffy Duck. Woohoo! Um, aside from Bugs, he really is the star of the show. Let's, let's be honest here. Yeah, um, I love Daffy. He's you know pound for pound uh with with alongside bugs as being one of the most uh popular recognized and most emulated voice i'd say everyone likes to do that list of things that he has but you know it's it's such a what, what a weird character <laughs> a duck with a lisp and then my little niece loves tweeny oh really yeah you have a niece yeah I She's didn't like know sister. that. She's like a little sister to me. I call her my niece. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, cool. Congratulations, you're an uncle. Thank you. Uh, and how old is she, and what is her name? Her name's Danielle, and she's eight years old. Ooh, I thought I taught Danielle. I did. I did teach Danielle. <laughs> Thank you. Tweety's right make... behind me. Yep. Tweety's awesome. <laughs> Tweety is Tweety is cool. Okay, he's that... a bad old putty chat. You know, like he's. He's so funny because he, you know, he he, he clearly is a baby, uh, or or is he? Because Tweety's Tweety's my name, and I don't know my age. He could be fooling us. He could be fifty years old. No, uh, and just sound like a child. You know, the 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 thing about Tweety is that he's innocent, but really, I mean, he really puts Sylvester through the ringer. After all, Sylvester is trying to eat him, but uh, Tweety, I think, knows, you know, clearly is the smarter of the two and just really punishes this poor cat. Yeah. And then, if you don't mind, my, uh, Foop. Nope. Oh, Foop! That's uh, a fairly odd parent supervillain. <laughs> I'll get you, Timmy Turner! It's been a while since I've done that voice. Thank you. I mean, those are all my like, childhood dreams, like, you know, back when I was, when I was like, a little kid. Oh, my God, thank you. <laughs> that's, thank you so much. Hey, man, that's awesome. That was that was a good time uh, working on Fairly Odd Parents and, uh, you know, uh, Butch Hartman and the rest of that crew. They were uh, they were unstoppable force for quite some time. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I had a chance to do voices on some of his uh, series, mainly Fairly Odd Parents and... Uh, with Foop, I didn't think that was going to be a character that was going to be back as often as he was, but they made him like a, a part of the supervillain team, yeah. like a go-to member. And, uh, you know, there's something about playing uh, 
evil versions. Of, like you know, Poof was the fairy baby, but who's the evil fairy baby? You know, like playing the evil version of a character is always fun to do. And uh, Foop definitely provided uh, a very big sandbox to play in. Nice. I like that. Okay. Now, uh, if you could pick any role in any movie, TV show, what role would you love to do? I obviously didn't. We wish you could have, like, like. Man, it's always going to go back to Batman for me. I feel like as I get older, I might I might be able to play him. But, you know, a, a, as it is now, my normal speaking voice is, uh, you know, uh, more fitted for someone like Leonardo. I got to play Leonardo in Batman versus uh, TMNT. I don't know if you ever saw that. I saw that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, getting to play Leonardo uh, fighting Batman, you know, I think that's something that we all used to do with our toys back in like the 80s anyways with Batman and Ninja Turtles figures. Uh, so I, I may have uh, channeled that subconsciously. But uh, mm -hmm. Batman is always going to be one of those characters for me. Like one day, hopefully... If I'm lucky, um, I'm 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 already lucky enough, and I'm not. I don't want to ask for, I don't want to ask the universe for any more stuff. I, I'm quite happy where I am. Uh, but in 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 an alternate universe, I would love to play the uh, the the Cape Crusader at some point. Nice. So uh, Bowser Batman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Now. Uh... Over the years of your career, do you still uh, keep in touch with your co-stars and directors and people on set? Uh, absolutely. I feel like animation, uh, if you're in it and you're, and you're listening or watching, mm -hmm. we'll all agree with each other that it's such a small world. You know, like almost every field, if you're in it long enough, it, it starts smaller at least. You start working with the same people but in different capacities. Like people that I worked with at uh, Nickelodeon years and years ago are now working at Netflix or Disney or, you know, like they, we all, we all, I like to say we all get kicked out of the same five private schools, which is, you know, Warner Brothers, Disney, Nickelodeon, you know, Cartoon Network and, you know, who else is there? Who else is left? Netflix is a big contender now, uh, you know, Maybe. yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, there's like a lot out there, and, and I mean, it, and it continues to grow with all of these streaming channels. And like, you know, we thought we thought we were going to be on Cartoon Network for the Looney Tunes cartoons, but it. I'm glad it went to HBO Max. It feels like a little bit more uh, exclusive that way. Um, but you know, nothing, nothing. I'm I'm from old school, so I'm like, I need to see something on TV sometimes. Which I heard actually, Looney Tunes cartoons is now playing in Canada oh. uh, every Sunday uh, on regular television. Nah. Who'd, have, who'd have thought that you could put a Looney Tunes cartoon back on TV? Nice. Okay. Now, uh, of all the people you work with at this time, being tough, who's the coolest person you work with? Coolest. The coolest person I've ever worked with? Oh, man. Um, that's a tough question because there's been great people, you know, and again, heroes of mine from animation like Billy West or Rob Paulson, you know, every time like I, I <laughs> when I first met the guy, I was like, this guy is a he's a living legend, you know, uh, and the things that he's been able to do with his career, uh, you know, past cartoons is amazing. Like he did talking tunes, like which is like cartoon podcast he's just a natural uh you know he's great at conversation and leading a conversation and uh uh you know getting to know that i if i had a time machine and went back to the 90s and said hey you're gonna be in a sound booth with you know yakko warner uh or pinky from pinky in the brain try to keep cool uh you know I can't help but geek out every time I'm around these people. If you're going to talk about celebrities, though, oh, my gosh. Uh, like Danny Trejo. I've got oh, to work with Danny Trejo. Uh, I got to work with John Leguizamo over a Skype feed. He was in New York. I was in L.A. 
And it was just very just crazy to think I'm, I'm running scenes with some of the people that, again, like I told Rob Paulson, I was like, I grew up watching you, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel like I owe him babysitting money. Uh, mm-hmm. And he always goes, oh, gee, thanks for making me feel so old, Bowser. You know, like he, uh, <laughs> he's got that golden voice. Nice. You're sure you're like, I'm not worthy, like, in Wayne's World? Oh, my God. Yeah, absolutely. That's, like, my mantra, Wayne's World. That's, you know, they, 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 they're they having fun in that movie uh, without even trying. And, uh, you know, I love Mike Myers. He's from Scarborough. That's where I'm from, in Toronto. It's a very specific, like, small suburb of, of the big uh, city. Uh, and a lot of Canadian talent has come from there or passed through there. Like Jim Carrey, you know Mike Myers, John Candy. Um, man, there's 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 so, even like even someone like Justin. I don't know if Justin Bieber's from Scarborough, but like Drake, you know, all these like famous singers and stuff come from where I'm from, and it it's just it's a nice uh, callback to home. Nice. It's crazy too. Like I'll tell you when I ask you like a sports question. My favorite sports team is my favorite hockey team is actually in Canada. Oh, you're kidding me. Yeah, it's crazy. That's super cool. I'll blow your mind. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, what director tell you the most? Is there a director you love to work with? Oh, man. It, there's so many great ones out there. Like, uh, you know, Lisa Sha- Schaefer, Sam uh, Regal, uh, Colette Sunderman, Andrea Romano, uh, Meredith Lane. Uh, man, oh, man. So many. Mary uh, uh, Elizabeth McGlynn. Uh, gosh. <laughs> I know I'm blanking. Uh, but, you know, Christy Reed, uh, Jenny McSwain, Rob Paulson, uh, Charlie Adler. I've worked with almost all the voice directors out there. And, uh, you know, uh, man. Uh, Serena, Serena, uh, Irwin. <laughs> the, the list goes on. There's so many, but there was something great about working with Andrea Romano. I, I, I see. I work so much with uh, Colette, though. Colette is uh, is is amazing as well in in her own right, and uh, she handles all the classics. And um, she was at Hanna Barbera, you know, like when it was still an animation studio and not a, uh, a closed for COVID gymnasium, uh, you know, she's, she's, she's been with these characters forever. And I think that's why they trust her with the characters. Cause she knows them. Uh, something, someone like Fred Flintstone or George Jetson or Bugs Bunny, you know, she's, she's been there. Uh, so it's quite, quite remarkable to work with her and to know that, if you have her trust, then, I mean, you know, she, she saw them all. She's worked with all the greats. Uh, Andrea Romano, who recently retired, is definitely, uh, hands down, one of my faves. Uh, because, you know, she worked on such remarkable things uh, back in the 90s. And here I am sitting in a room, five seasons on Puss in Boots, and I'm just like, wow, you know, like this this went the distance. Sometimes you're lucky to get two seasons now in an animated series or three if, if, if you're really lucky. But with Puss in Boots, we went for almost four to five, five and a bit. I wouldn't say six seasons, but it was definitely a solid five. And, uh, you know, it was a very Puss in Boots is another voice, another uh, voice match for me. From Antonio Banderas, yes, I play the kitty cat. So it's like, yeah, it's a voice match, but there's still that that character is so full, you know. It's so it's such a rich character that Antonio developed, and uh, you know, it, everyone knows Puss in Boots, right? When you yeah. say Puss in Boots, you hear Antonio Banderas and what he's been able to do with this character and his. His handling over acting with animation, where some live action actors, you know, we can be honest here, might not bring it. Maybe their performance is a little flat. But the thing about Antonio is how unpredictable 
he is with his acting with the accent you know i don't think it's something that he's doing on purpose it's 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 it's, it's natural for him clearly to have uh an accent from his native language but it lends itself so amazingly and uniquely to the character that it is super hard to replicate. Um, so, so then there's that. <laughs> Is there a director you like to work with? There oh man. Go. Well, yeah. I mean, between Andrea and, and Colette, but I've, I've, again, I've learned so much from everybody. It's kind of hard to pinpoint just one, you know, I also want to keep working, so I don't want to fav- play favorites. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you never wanted to feel like you know acting, voice acting, what would your career be, and what other interests and hobbies do you have besides voice acting? Ah, uh, man, oh man. Well, uh, I love collecting toys, so there's that. I mean, I wonder if I could like, with all the collections and art that I own, open up a store and sell. I'm sure, uh, you know, I'm like, I mean, I'm just looking around my table and it's like, look at that. Like, it's a Benny the Toon Cab doll. Who even has that? (laughs) You know, I had that Marvin statue. I have, I got a lot of things that I'm pretty sure if I sold them, I would be a millionaire. (laughs) Like, I've been collecting a lot of art and uh, that's like a big hobby of mine. I love animation cells uh, because they don't make them anymore for cartoons. So, if you can get your hand on a on a cool cell, uh, you know, I'm wondering if there's anything within reach. I don't think so. But if you get your hands on a cool cell, you know, it it is a a piece of film. It's a it's it's a frame. Like oh, I own like a so. yeah. Absolutely. I own like a, like one frame literally of of like seconds and minutes and hours of a movie. Uh, I uh, I have like a pretty. I wouldn't say it's a giant collection of Roger Rabbit cells from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but I have like four or five, maybe six or seven. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Let's just say my son's not going to college right away. Uh, but, mm-hmm. uh, there, you know, I have these amazing moments in time captured mm-hmm. behind a frame on a clear piece of plastic that has paint and ink on it. And you're just like, wow, like, like why am I so obsessed? And it's again, you know, when you're a kid and and you know, you, you don't have a driver's license, you're not you you're not allowed to like leave the house, uh maybe to play with your friends, but then you come home and you have a snack and you turn on you know, the TV and if it's like Fox, you know, they had Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, they had all of it. Um for me anyways in in Canada, it's it's so hard for me to think of like what I would be doing if I wasn't doing this. <laughs> I, I maybe I would go back to drawing because I still like to draw. Um, uh, but yeah, it's so hard to escape work uh, in animation because it's so enjoyable. Uh, that's why, like, when you say what other career would you have, I really can't think or pinpoint a career that would fill the void of voice acting. So you could talk, make your uh, toy store, Bowser's Toys. That would be amazing. Uh, I love also like graphic T-shirts. Like I love looking at designs and uh, you know seeing where they chose to place things on a T-shirt. You know, I have a T-shirt company in Canada called uh, RetroKid.ca. Uh, we just released a bunch of Inspector Gadget licensed T-shirts. So. Uh, and in that, I had a, des- a help, uh, helping hand in designing some of it. So, oh, nice. well, I was actually no joke thinking about making merch. I got you. I'll give you like a some shirts for free. I got you. Oh man, I I that I would wear them proudly. Thank you. No problem. Because I won't. I like to, that looks cool merch. Like you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, yeah, favorite band and type of music. Oh man. Uh, nothing beats the Wu-Tang Clan with rap music. I'm a huge fan. Um, uh, you know, Beastie Boys, also good. Uh, yeah, just really upbeat, fun, bouncy music. Like, Gorillaz is always amazing. I love I love how eclectic and, and uh, you know, worldly they've become. And the people that they choose to collaborate with only increase their and expand their universe um and and 
really enlighten and expand the taste of people listening to it. Um, uh, but I, and, and aside from that, you know, the visuals alone on gorillas is amazing. You get this like, you know, comic book style in animation by, by Jamie Hewlett, uh, who created the, the characters, the look of the characters. And, um, that's like the ultimate, that's like, that's like modern day, uh, Josie and the Pussycats where it's like, there's this band that's not even real, but they're so famous more famous than actual bands with real people in it. So, I mean, of course, there are real people behind the characters, but, uh, you know, they started out as an imaginary band. Uh, you know, we're, we're cartoons and we produce music, and it's what a great idea. Yeah, actually, I got to meet my favorite band, you know, Queen, like, we are champions, we were rock, you actually got to meet them. Really? Really? Yeah, I met Brian, the guitarist, and uh, Roger, the drummer. Jeez, Jeez, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's like the way you throw a woman too. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, like, I, know, I mean, holy smokes, the, like living legends, right? Yeah. And Brian's like freakishly tall, like he's like six five. I was like, holy smokes, you're tall. <laughs> Super intimidating. And then he's got the big hair and stuff. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Favorite sports and favorite team from those sports. This is probably. I mean, this if this if this isn't an indicator of, of who I root for, uh, just don't tell LeBron. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I've been here for over fifteen years now, so I feel like I have to be an honorary Laker fan. But uh, I love Toronto and and I love the Toronto Raptors. Basketball is definitely uh, one of my. I mean, if not the only sport that I watch. You know, I like to play baseball, you know, like catch and the idea of being outside, but sitting there and watching it for as long as it is and and how nail biting it can be because you're waiting that long. um, It's hard. You know, baseball is a tough one. Yeah, like, you know, hockey. My favorite hockey team is the Vancouver Canucks. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. See, here's the thing. It's like you'd think being a Canadian, I would automatically go for hockey first, but I, I went for basketball. Mm-hmm. Nice. Do you have a favorite hockey, baseball, and football team? or? I mean, Toronto for sure. Lakers for sure. Um, baseball, it's got to be Blue Jays, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that's where I'm from. It's usually you're, you're defending your home turf, you know? Nice. Okay. Now, uh, do you have a, what is your favorite food, and why is your favorite food? Uh, anything you could order from your phone. That's, uh, <laughs> spin the wheel, take a, take your pick. There's so many to choose from. Pizza, I just made pizza today, you know. Ooh. Slap the old pizza in the oven and uh, warm it for 20, if, if you consider that making pizza. I warmed some pizza today. Uh, but yeah, that's that's good stuff. Um, you know, there's some traditional Filipino foods out there, Chinese food, Korean barbecue. I love so much sushi. Who doesn't like sushi? Uh, I don't know if you could tell, but I don't have one favorite food. I have like 50. So <laughs> I gotta, I gotta hit the gym as hard as I, uh, I have many foods that I like. Nice. Okay. Uh, hopefully when things get back to normal sooner rather than later, are there, any projects in the works? Uh, surprisingly, I have like a couple opportunities that are on camera performances, uh, but I can't really talk about them because of strict yeah. uh, NDA. NDA but, uh, yeah, uh, that's NDA with a D, not a B, not N- N- NBA. We're talking about <laughs> basketball, but uh, you know, bringing it back to LeBron. Um, but yeah, um, Again, just lucky to be working and healthy and and all Thanks. that good stuff. Yeah. Like that. Okay. What advice would you give younger people who want to become a voice actor? Or voice actress? Well, it's all about the acting. It's all about good acting. It, it starts with the performance of a character, a portrayal of a character, even if it's Leonardo, a, a talking ninja turtle. Or uh, a talking rabbit, Doc. There has to be some believability in in what you are selling. Um, Even if it's a slapstick joke, like, 
if you're a cartoon character getting blown up by dynamite, you know, <laughs> you got to commit. Uh, that's why I always bring dynamite with me in the sound booth. And no, I'm just kidding. Uh, a method actor. Blow me up. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's all about the acting and then the voice will follow. Uh, never get too caught up on like how accurate you can sound like a character. The real success behind impression is the physicality and like the life you're pouring into from you know if you're a comic it's like your own life experience right and you know it's performed in some way or turned into a monologue um yeah it's, it's very pretty interesting i like that place. good place. <laughs> okay uh is there anything you'd like to promote and shout out i could like well, this interview, let me know where I can post it and, uh, you know, retweet it and all that stuff. I love reaching out and I like when people uh, take the time and have patience, such as yourself, uh, and, and wait for the scoop and wait for the story. And, uh, you know, if I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about my fellow voice actors like Fred Tatashore, Carlos Ellis Rocky, Tara Strong. You know, we're in a very small community, so... Uh, yeah i mean it's 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 getting smaller by the day and, and and you know i don't know how these casting directors listen to 500 auditions in a night and mm. choose one you know like that's so insane um but it's part of the job and uh you know we're all thankful for it well i'll, I'll link your uh, twitter and i don't know if you have instagram Bye. Yeah, it's all it's all the same Bye. at Bowzilla. <laughs> okay. I'll link those for you. Anything to help you out? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Well, I think you all so much for watching. Thank you again, Mr. Bowser, for being an awesome and amazing guest. And the, and the, and the, and that's all, folks. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. And stay awesome. And stay awesome, Mr. Bowser. You too, man.